Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And today's video is video number three in the candle making for beginners series on my channel. And in this video, I am gonna be talking all about jars or vessels as they are called in the candle making community and how to go about picking them and then some information on some safety aspects. So since we have been talking about container candles, one of the most important aspects of the actual part of a container candle is the container that you put it in. Now, when it comes to choosing a vessel or choosing a jar for your candle making hobby or candle making business, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, I do want to talk about why the term vessel is used in the candle making world. And I know that this term can be kind of weird when you first hear about it. Um, but the reason why it's uh, very well known or very commonly used in the candle making world, the term vessel, is because not every container, not every thing that you make a candle out of is a jar. So there's ceramic containers, there's cement containers, there's uh, tins, there's different things that you wouldn't necessarily call a jar. So a lot, of, a lot of times when we think of what a jar is, we're thinking about something that's made of glass. But not everything that you make a candle out of is made out of glass. So that's why the majority of the time when people are talking about um, different vessels to use, they're using the term vessel because vessel is basically just kind of like a universal term for you know ceramic containers uh, tins glass jars anything like that it's just a kind of universal term for whatever you use to make a candle out of now before you think of anything else about the vessel that you want to use uh, the color of it the style of it the shape the size anything like that you want to make sure that you are choosing something that is made and can handle the heat of candle making because not every jar vessel thing that you find at a like a Goodwill or a thrift store or something like that is suitable for candle making and the reason behind that is because when we're adding heat to something we're adding a flame the integrity of the container that is basically containing everything in matters so much and needs to be able to take that heat and if it can't then it is can be a danger because it can crack or explode or cause other issues um, and damage you know the surface beneath it or um, you know crack and leak and all that kind of stuff and uh, obviously that's not something that we're wanting. Even if we find something that's like, oh, this would be so cute to make a candle out of, um, which I've seen before specifically at like craft stores and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, this would be so cute. Um, but for the most part, I've stayed away from doing that just because I don't know if it is safe for candle making. Now, one way that you can go around this is if you find something and there's a brand name on it and you're able to reach out to that company, you can ask them if their container or their vessel, whatever it is, would be suitable for candle making. That's actually what I did in the very, very beginning. I mean, I was brand new into candle making. I don't even know if I was thinking about it as a business yet. I might have been, but I think I was just kind of, you know, interested in learning more. And I was at Michael's craft store and I found a glass jar. It was a Libby jar, which I now know is totally fine for candle making. But at the time I didn't. So I reached out to the company and I asked them and they said, yep, you can use that for candle making. So it's never a bad idea to double check um, if it is kind of like a one-off brand or something that you find at a non-candle supplier and you're interested if that is going to be suitable for candle making. Now, on the flip side, if you purchase a jar, vessel, tin, whatever it is, from a candle supplier, then you can pretty much almost guarantee that that is suitable for candle making because they are selling it for candle making supplies. And a lot of times these containers have a thicker wall to them. So um, if you're looking into, let's say like 
if you pull out like a wine glass or something, you can tell that the glass is thinner. So that would not be suitable for candle making. But a lot of these other glasses that are used or even just different materials, there's a thicker wall. It's, it's, it's more sturdy. You can tell that it's more durable, which means that it's definitely way more suitable for candle making. And if you're getting it from a candle supplier website, then I would say that that's kind of your go ahead to make a candle out of it. So when it comes to choosing the kind of vessel that you want to make candles out of, there's obviously a bunch of different uh, questions that you can ask yourself. And it mainly has to do with, are you doing this for a hobby? Are you just kind of playing around? In that case, you can really just kind of order a couple different styles that you like, play around with it. Um, and you're just kind of learning throughout the testing process and making candles. And it can be fun to make candles and kind of different styles and different looks of these different vessels. Um, but if you're looking at it from maybe a business perspective, then there's a couple different things that you can think of. So for instance, are you wanting to put a candle label on it? Are you more interested in having a less expensive vessel so that you can have a higher profit margin? Or are you wanting to create maybe a luxury candle so you're more interested in the style of the candle and maybe um, there's not gonna be a candle label on it? So there's all these different factors that can come into play. And just like what I talked about with the choosing your wax video, um, if you're trying to figure out what vessel to use, um, you kind of can go about it in the, sen in the same way of figuring out where the closest candle supplier is to you and then look and see what their options are because just like with wax, jars can be very, very heavy and very expensive to ship. So that's something that you're going to want to take into consideration when you are choosing and um, you know figuring out which vessel you want to use. But if you're just getting started with candle making, I mean, I ordered a couple different styles and I was kind of practicing and learning and having fun with it. There's no issue with that at all. Don't feel like you're gonna be wasting supplies because it's really just for the fun of it and to learn and grow. And um, that's also a really good way to do it, especially in the beginning when you are learning the craft of candle making. Because if you are learning the craft of candle making just as a hobby, then it's just gonna be fun to be able to experiment. But if you're wanting to take it to the next level and then turn it into a business, by experimenting and learning with these different types of vessels, and you're gonna learn a lot in the process that's only gonna help you further when you go to make your decisions for your business. Um, but one thing to note in all of this when it comes to testing of these containers and testing of these candles that you are creating is that Number one, you can practice on, let's say a cheaper vessel. Let's say you get some mason jars, some nine ounce straight sided jars, whatever it is, and you're practicing and learning and testing on, on these containers. You're testing different fragrances and wicks and you're learning the process. But let's say you wanna start a business and use, let's say the Evermore jars from 1617, which are way more expensive. You have to also test with that jar as well. You can't just use the same wick, the same way that you make the nine ounce straight set of jars and then transfer that over to the Evermore. It's going to be a brand new testing process, but the difference is, is that you kind of already have an idea of the testing process, how to go about doing it by using the cheaper supplies. And then if you want to transition into using more expensive supplies, then you can do that. But the main thing is that if you are going to give away or sell any of your candles, you have to test the candle exactly as you will as exactly as it's going to be when you sell or give away that candle. So it has to be the exact same wicks, the same vessel, the same fragrance oil, fragrance oil percentage. Everything has to be the exact same in the testing process. So you can't just test on, let's say a cheaper, smaller jar, and then just be like, oh, well, I'll just put everything in that, but in a bigger jar, it's not going to be able to translate over. You have to go through basically a brand new testing process. 
But honestly, this can be one of the most creative and fun parts of the candle making process because the way that your candle looks before anybody actually lights it can leave an impression. There's a perceived value on that product. Um, again, even if it's just for a hobby and you're making it for friends and family, um, it can really make or break or be a determining factor on whether this looks like just, you know, like a 1990s home project craft candle, or if it looks like, are you sure you didn't buy this from the store and claiming that you made it, which would be a really good compliment. Um, but uh, I really hope that this video helped you out. If it did, make sure to leave this a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video.